Hello LTC 8875. This video is going to recap some of the main ideas that we wanted to highlight from Unit 3, which was on the media landscape, and we looked at some popular articles about technology and math education and some research articles that deal with technology and math education. And then at the end of this video, we're also going to give an overview of Unit 4, which kicked off today. So there we're going to be looking at some algebra technologies and how those technologies can hopefully support students learning algebraic ideas. Um, but looking back at Unit 3, first of all, one of the things that we really enjoyed seeing from you was the technology survey assignment. So some great things that you saw and brought up and wrote about. Um, so we are going to do a couple things with that assignment. First of all, we created a voice thread, and so that voice thread is going to be on Canvas. It's actually already active on Canvas. That's going to be one of our discussions for Unit 4. Go in um, and look at the voice thread slides, and then you can leave some text or audio or video comments and engage with each other that way. That's going to be dealing with some of the overall ideas that came out of your technology surveys. We aggregated some data, and I think it's pretty interesting what you'll see there. And We're interested to hear what your thoughts are on some of the discussion points that we bring up. The other thing about that assignment is that we are going to look at your individual write-ups and give you some individual feedback. So those will be coming on Canvas uh, shortly. Some of you already have your feedback available. We'll try to have everybody's up over the next couple days. Another goal of ours for that assignment was to introduce you to these survey tools. So the Google Forms or SurveyMonkey or things like that. Some of you may have used these before, but if you haven't, hopefully you found value in these survey tools themselves and you might be able to use those tools for various different purposes in the future. It really is a nice way to get survey responses and have them compiled automatically for you and then use them in a workable form rather than having to do lots of paper and pencil stuff. Um, but we also want to bring up some ideas that came up from the last unit. So there was a discussion that you had on your readings that were about calculators. So we had two studies that dealt with calculators and one of the big questions was do the findings from those studies, uh, and those studies being about calculators, do, do the findings generalize to other technologies? So like tablets and softwares and smartphones and other things. Um, if we find something out about how calculators work, does that generalize to all digital technology in general? So there was some disagreement over this and some good points made on both sides. Some of you said, yes, you know, technology and findings about calculators does generalize to things like tablets and smartphones. But some of you said no, it said maybe there's specific things about calculators and tablets, smartphones, software, and other things don't necessarily behave the same way as calculators do. Um, so a lot of points on both sides there. Usually it's safer to think that things won't generalize unless you have a good basis for generalizing it. So if you're using a smartphone to do graphing calculator things, then you can probably generalize findings about how graphing calculators support students' learning or where the benefits and drawbacks are of calculators. But if you're doing a lot of other things with software or with technology, then you, you know, it doesn't necessarily generalize from calculators. So if you're using tablets to do new things, or if you're using multiple apps, or if you're having the students engage with them differently than they engage with the calculator, then you might have new uh, relationships to student learning and it might not just be a generalization of calculators. We wanted to share um, something that Emily had written on the discussion board because we thought this captured some of the ideas that people were going back and forth about. So here's a quote from Emily. I think it truly depends on how you are using the technologies in the classroom. I think one of the biggest disadvantages when it comes to calculators is the idea between procedural and conceptual knowledge. In lower level math classes, a lot of knowledge learned is very procedural. Students are using calculators for basic computations and are not learning the fundamental reasoning behind the math. Then, when students get to upper-level math courses, I do feel that the calculators can help aid in conceptual understanding because of the flexibility of the graphs and the efficiency of manipulating them. However, I think the issue then lies in the fact that the students have become so dependent on the calculator in lower-level courses that they do not have the basic underlying knowledge necessary to reason through the conceptual knowledge being presented." End quote. So that's bringing up this idea of really how are you using the technology and calculators, they have a very low level kind of functionality. Um, and maybe if students get in the habit of that low level stuff of just using it to compute things, students might not even realize that the calculators can help with conceptual development. And that question, I think, goes to other technologies as well. If people get used to technologies just for low level rote type of things, then maybe people aren't using the technologies to their full capabilities. We also wanted to give a disclaimer about uh, the Mao et al. 2016 article. This was the one about high school calculators and then following that forward into calculus in the university level. We wanted to let you know that assigning the reading for you to read was not meant as us endorsing those findings. 
Uh, some of you raised good critiques about the article and some of the flaws in the study, and we also wanted to reiterate some of our own critiques of that study, the Mao et al. So they compared high school calculator use to college success, but they only really measured the amount of use of calculators, not the way in which the calculators were used in high school. This is problematic because there are good ways to use calculators in high school and bad ways to use calculators. Without controlling for how they were used, any results about the future implications in college are pretty much meaningless. Also, the calculus setting in college is not exactly a neutral playing field, and it's not necessarily representative of success in general. Uh, you might think about success being broader than just how successful are they in university calculus. Many mathematics departments at universities, by the way, have severe calculator restrictions. Some instructors don't want to have calculators at all. Some tests, they're only allowed to use calculators on certain parts. So a lot of times in math departments, there are these restrictions. And with that being the case, it's not fair to compare students who went from no calculators in high school to basically no calculators in college. In a sense, those students are playing the same game all the way through. They're kind of used to having no or limited calculators. And then comparing that with the students who used calculators as tools for learning in high school and then had to shift to and deal with restricted calculator use in college, that latter group of students, they did worse in the Mao et al. study, but they also were the students who basically had the whole game changed underneath them. They got comfortable and they figured out ways of reasoning mathematically with calculators, and now they had to change and figure out a way to do mathematics without calculators. So not really a fair comparison there between the groups. Um, even without these critiques of Mao et al., we always want to look for a consensus of research and not get infatuated with one particular study. So, you know, even if this Mao et al. was a perfect study, it's still just a single study. And we instead, we want to just add it together with other studies and try to look for trends across research. It may be that calculators have detrimental effects for calculus success. Maybe Mao et al., you know, are onto something that is true at its core. So we're not discounting Mao's findings overall. We have to take them seriously. But this is a complex issue, and we need to see further evidence, especially because there are some critiques of the Mao et al. study design. Um, one of the things in Unit 3 that we wanted you to do, too, was to look at some media coverage of technology and math education and then some research coverage and how do these different um, venues write about the issue. And the overall idea here is that a lot of times in the media coverage, there's an oversimplification of the issue. There's a search for something that really works or something that's great and everybody should do this, but that's an oversimplification. Or it's sometimes, you know, this thing is bad and schools should stop doing this, but that's an oversimplification. It's kind of the nature, though, of popular media. And then comparing that to the research side of things, a lot of times the research gets too complex or uh, too sophisticated or they look too closely at just one little aspect and they miss the complexity. So in research, it can get sometimes too nuanced and it makes it hard to draw meaningful implications from the research. So we got to try to find a balance of the sort of clarity and simplicity of the popular media, um, but also find a way to get to the truth and the stuff that's at the core of the research writing or research literature. In your discussion forums, you also had some interesting ideas about when is it appropriate for students to use calculators? Um, you know, should they use them to explore concepts initially, or should they wait until after they've learned a concept and then use the calculator later to just kind of implement it? Um, should they use a calculator for simple arithmetic? Should they use it just to check themselves? Um, but should they have a paper and pencil or a mental approach first and the calculator is just kind of a backup plan or a way to check? Um, these are important issues and they're not just about calculators, they're kind of about technology in general. So we're going to follow these forward. In, the ne in this uh, Unit 4 and Unit 5, we're going to look at ways that technology can be used for certain content areas. And also the voice thread discussion that we're going to have in Unit 4 that's going to take up this idea as well about when do we really want to use calculators or when do we want to use technology. Also, there's the question of um, how much technology and how frequently it should be used. Um, so we asked you what was your basis for your personal relationship to technology, and it seemed like most people based it on their personal philosophy, philosophies about teaching, and you gave rationales for that philosophy. Um, a lot of you also mentioned knowledge of your students and really thinking about my position on technology is dependent upon what engages my students or what helps my students learn. Um, so that's a very justifiable position. And one thing that some of you brought up that was a good point is that for students' needs, it does depend on the age as well. Like maybe having less technology 
for younger students, but as students get older, maybe incorporating more technology. Um, some of you did consider 21st century skills, um, but there can be these limitations that come along with it, like, you know, maybe we want to have students be using technology and doing STEM connections and things, but sometimes you maybe have a curriculum that's not very friendly to technology, and so that's a practical limitation of what you're able to do with technology. What we really noticed for the group overall was that you all seem to have mathematical meaning as your driving force. You wanted the technology to help the mathematical learning or to help students make sense of the mathematics that they're doing. And that seemed much more important to you as a group than, say, tapping into current cultural trends. So you see much more about the mathematics first and trends or you know things happening like Pokemon Go is maybe a secondary consideration. All right, the last thing we want to do in this video is just quickly look ahead to Unit 4. So I mentioned there's a voice thread discussion. We're really looking forward to your interactions and thoughts in that voice thread that's looking at the technology survey. There's also going to be a traditional discussion forum that's about the two readings that we have. So there are two readings that are about technology supporting algebra learning. There's a Davis reading and then a Sackow and Karaman reading. So read those and then engage in the discussion forum. A quick reminder, we do have a due date on the discussion forum. But that due date is the date that the forum closes. That's like your final day to get something in that forum. So don't wait till that day to engage in the forum. You should be engaging in the forum multiple times over the next two weeks. And then that due date is like the final day to get something in there. The other thing we have for Unit 4 is an assignment for you to do and turn in. That's an app review assignment. We want you to analyze two different algebra-related apps. And we know not all of you are teaching algebra. But all of you are teaching content that either sets a foundation for algebra or it builds upon algebra. And one of the apps, Desmos, is actually useful far beyond algebra for arithmetic, stats, and more. So we hope that this uh, assignment will be relevant to everybody, even though we are choosing to focus somewhat on algebra this unit. So that's it for right now. This week you can focus on that voice thread discussion and doing the readings. And if you want, you can get started on that app review assignment. But um, you don't have to this week because next week you'll have some time to continue the voice thread and the discussion of the readings. And then next week is when you'll have to make sure you have that app review assignment done. So thanks and we'll see you online.